All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended by it. <laughs> um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, any, uh, we have a variety of library topics and activities on the show. Uh, interviews, mini training sessions, demos, um, basically anything library related, we are happy and want to have it on the show. Uh, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, um, both the live show here and our archives that are available on our website. Uh, we do the live show every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that is um, okay. You can always go to our website, as I said, and see the recordings of all of our shows going back to the very beginning, which was um, January uh, 2009 when we started. So, yeah, uh, we're in our the start of our sixth year of doing this. Wow. Do the math, and it's a long time. <laughs> so um, we have Commission Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on and do shows, and we do bring in guest speakers, as we have this morning. And sitting next to me is uh, Carolyn Dow, who's um, from just down the street. She walked up through the snow this morning <laughs> uh, from Lincoln City Libraries and the Poly Music Library there. And uh, she's going to share with us what the library is all about, what it does, and about music librarianship in general and what she's doing there at the library. So I will uh, hand over to you, Carolyn. Take it away. And, Thank you, uh, Krista. It's really my pleasure to be here. I feel like I have the most perfect job for me. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything else. I love being a music librarian. And so it's going to be fun for me to share a little bit about music libraries and music librarianship, and especially international music librarianship and my activities. I know that was one of the things that caught our attention was the, that part of it, the, the, uh, the conference that you went to that I know you're going to talk about in a bit. <laughs> Before I get started on the slides and talking about the Poly Music Library specifically, I dug up a definition of music librarianship from the music librarianship. Music Library Association, which is the American library organization for music librarians. Mm -hmm. What is a music librarian? A music librarian is a librarian qualified to specialize in music. A broad musical background is essential for music in any style, medium, or era can be, find a place in a library. Aptitude and training in both music and librarianship are necessary. And what do library, music librarians do? The traditional responsibilities of librarians are at the heart of most music librarians' activities. I'm a librarian, mm -hmm. yeah. but I get to deal in music, yeah. which is really fun. Go ahead, and try again. There you go. The Poly Music Library is a public music library. That means it's basically a music department in a public library. Most public libraries have music in their collections. A section but of some sort. Have a yeah. section, or they, ha they at least have a few songbooks. They have some books about composer biographies. They may have some CDs. But the Poly Music Library is all music. It's a fairly small collection being somewhere between 12,000 and 15,000 cataloged books and scores. And then of course there are the CDs. Um, we also have archival collections. We have music magazines. In fact, if you look in this slide, you can see just on that book truck at the bottom left, there's some CDs, there's books, there's a score. Just a little bit of everything. A whole mishmash of formats, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Polly's been around for a while, and so the slides that I found have, are going to vary. And so I did try to at least date them as best as I could. Uh, the blue shelves are the same from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty full, which means like yeah. public libraries, we have to weed. Mm -hmm. um, many music libraries and academic institutions don't necessarily weed, or they 
remove things to off-site storage. Mm. Lillian Helms Pauley left her estate in trust for a music library for the citizens of Lincoln. She lived a very long life. She taught music both at the university and privately and had no children and we're very fortunate that she left the funds to allow us to have a music library which means Polly is not tax supported even though we are in the public library. Oh, nice. So it so still is keeping it going. Just we are her. funded from the endowment mm -hmm. and uh, another music teacher in town a couple years ago established mm -hmm. a another fund, uh, another endowment through the Library Foundation. So we have, I don't think that's actually generating money that we can use yet, but mm -hmm. it for the future. For future. Mm -hmm. Lillian also had p basically paid for the space where the Poly Music Library is. She provided the matching funds for an LSCA grant that paid mm -hmm. for an expansion of Bennett Martin Public Library nice. before the music library was established by quite a few years. But she got her space in the <laughs> library. I was hired in 1981 to create the new Poly Music Library. It was the first public music library established in the U.S. in about 20 years. And so it was something very special. We wouldn't have it without Lillian Polly. But it was fun to create the library and had to start with getting a few materials and then shelving and even that card catalog back mm -hmm. in that picture. <laughs> That shows a little variety of the types of scores that we had. That we have chamber music, we have solo music, piano vocal scores. We actually have a sheet music collection that has been built entirely through donations. It's pop basically popular sheet music, sheets. Um, over 12,000 titles. And it is now uh, considered a research quality collection, and that's part of our archival materials, and is not cataloged. 1982, when we opened to the public, we had stacks. We had, they had books on them. There was still a little bit of space. By 1993, there was no space. <laughs> <laughs> and from about then on, we had to get we had to start reading just to make sure that we had room for new materials. Mm -hmm. In that slide, you can see we had a computer system. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had the one I started in libraries. Yep. Back yeah, then. Um, we went online in 1987, and that, there's that clunky monitor, dumb terminal. Mm -hmm. hey, it worked, <laughs> but it worked. We had magazines, and if you look past the fire doors, you can see LP records. Those are actually coming back. I yeah, think of they are. Places are selling them. You can get um, mm -hmm. and buy turntables in places like mm -hmm. Best Buy. Yep. And in the foreground, you can see a display case that has sheet music in it. That's one of the things that we use it for: is displays to mm -hmm. promote Polly, get people seeing things, songs that they remember. Oh. and get them into the collection. Oh, that's good. We had traditional magazine shelving, mm -hmm. but we needed that space for books. Mm -hmm. So we've been tried a variety of things, and now we just simply have magazines in a plexiglass rack, mm -hmm. several titles to a slot. People have to hunt but we have the magazines, and they fine. For 
for about 25 years or so, we had a reference desk. You can see staff there at the desk. <laughs> but I blew up the reference desk. I actually mm -hmm. attended the, the program session mm -hmm. that was held about uh, doing other things and not being confined by mm -hmm. the desk. And I think it was called blowing up the reference yeah. desk. And that kiosk works beautifully. I can bring customers around to show them what's on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not just simply seated at a desk. I can move throughout the collection. I can work on cataloging in my office and step out to be with the customers. Makes it much more um, open and, um, and welcoming, I think, and more interactive that people. And it takes so yeah. much less space. Yes, yeah, so that too. Yeah, when you need the space, definitely. <laughs> um, we are fortunate that we're still able to buy materials. Um, our budget is based off of the income from the trust, and it, it varies, but we've been able to continue to purchase new materials, and that's critical for any library. One of the neat things that we have is that MIDI keyboard, and we have Finale on that computer. That computer actually gets used primarily as a CD listening station, mm -hmm. but we do have the software on it, and people can sit down and notate what the music in their head, mm -hmm. work on arrangements. That sort of transitions to our some of our online services. Mm -hmm. We've had our Poly Music Library web page for more than a decade. It's definitely time that we rework it. Mm -hmm. But it's there, it works, it gets customers to where they can find our online resources. One of which is that Music of Old Nebraska. Polly was very fortunate in from 2004, 2005, and 2006 to have digitization grants through LSTA mm -hmm. and the Nebraska Library Commission. The first one was the Music of Old Nebraska project, and we do have a display of those materials on our website, uh, annotated author catalog, thumbnails, as we even have some lesson plans, historical background for the pieces. Those pieces are also in Nebraska Memories and the materials from mm -hmm. our other digitization projects mm -hmm. are also in Nebraska Memories. You need to click. Um, okay. Go ahead, try again. There okay. We, go. Yep. we do have access to streaming streaming music for our customers through Alexander Street Press's music online databases. Mm -hmm. And it's available several places through the Poly website, uh, Lincoln City Libraries, list of databases. So anybody with a Lincoln City Libraries card can access these from home. It is streaming, not downloadable. I put out an irregular newsletter of new, often new titles of things that I've added. Uh, sometimes I do topical book lists, and they're available through uh, an email book list that people can sign up for. And they're also on the Poly. Uh, Poly page, and there was an icon down at the bottom, and they're available through the Libra Lincoln City Libraries, books, me music, and more, um, book lists pages.
And thanks to a donation from the Musical Art Club of Lincoln, we Polly is now buying some music um, downloadable ebooks. Wow. Cool. And they're accessible through the Lincoln City Libraries pages. And of course, we have a link on the Polly page. Probably the thing we're best known for, other than our collection, is the Specialized Music Reference and Research Services. We help customers um, from all over the, actually all over the world, with their informa music information needs. Um, just last week, I helped a customer who needed information about someone who was in the Music of Old Nebraska project. Hmm. And I was able to get him that, but then I went and did further research and he answered back. That was just, just exactly what he was looking <laughs> for. Um, I've had helped customers look for music that might have been used at a wedding in the Oregon Territory in the 1840s. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, we have some old hymnals, and I was able to find a hymnal from the 1840s of a denomination that would have been in the Oregon Territory mm -hmm. and found a wedding hymn in it. <laughs> and one of the fun questions, a little strange, was, about the death of a Metropolitan Opera tenor when he was in Lincoln, oh. supposedly going to perform <laughs> <laughs> with a touring, the first touring company after the Second World War. Mm. Uh, they were doing Slater Mouse in English, and it was going to be at the, I believe, at the University Coliseum. But he died before the performance. And there's a researcher researching that whole tour. Mm -hmm. And she con because the lead tenor died in Lincoln, uh, she did contact me to see if I had any information. And I was mm -hmm. able to come up with some. And the, it was interesting to see that the death had been withheld until after the performance. Ah. And so one of the papers in town was, why did they withhold this information? Uh -huh. <laughs> was it just to notify his wife? Or did they want people to still to come, come to, to the, the performance? Yep. And was it a cover-up? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just as common, or actually more common, for people to come in looking for song lyrics. Mm -hmm. Uh, looking for the uh, third and fourth verses in German of Silent Night at Christmas Time, <laughs> ah, yeah. and various pieces in specific arrangements, specific keys. But it runs the whole gamut of things. And it, some of them do actually, or a lot of them do take a knowledge of music mm -hmm. to be able to assist the customer. When we were founded, we, can, we knew we were going to be a statewide resource and actually a regional resource. So how can we serve you? Probably the most common thing, way would be through interlibrary loan of our music materials. If you happen to be in the Pioneer Consortium, you can probably just see in the catalog what we have, mm -hmm. get an OCLC number, and go order it. Otherwise, you can, you can contact us to see if we have something or find it through, through OCLC. I'm really happy to help with reference assistance and 
some libraries have sent questions to me. And I'm usually able to answer, <laughs> or at least point in the right direction. We can help with locating music materials to meet your customers' needs. They might not be in Poly. They might be someplace else. They might be, there might be a digital copy of something online that will serve your customers' needs that it just takes the right way of searching or a different way of searching to find. Um, I was able to locate a song in a specific key for a customer in embedded in a library catalog in Australia. Wow. <laughs> and I knew to look because of my involvement in YAML, that I'd heard about their digitization mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. So that's, awesome. that's coming up. <laughs> but you never know where you're going to find things these days. And a lot of stuff is online, but it's where you look and how you look. And maybe the thing online isn't what you need. You need a paper copy. Mm -hmm. And we also help the state through our Nevada memories participation I think right. oh yeah definitely keep building that up, that collection up for every anything in the state yeah all, on all topics and that Nebraska memories actually has a nice range of our archival materials in them but at least show, browsing through the collections there mm -hmm. show the types of items we have anyway um, if you're looking for pictures of the Lincoln Boys choir you'll find it or some historical programs. Yeah, in case anyone is wondering, we've been talking about the Poly um, website, the web page in Nebraska Memories. Um, all the links that are any that are being mentioned during the show will be available in the show notes afterwards. I've been putting them into our delicious account, so we'll be able to be able to have a quick link to them um, afterwards. Thank you. Oh, it just keeps. Actually, let's go back one. Um, one thing I don't have a slide for is the future of Polly. Hmm. And as Lincoln is discussing a new Bean Library, right? Yeah. I want to reassure our listeners that Polly will have a place in any new Bean Library. In fact, we may have the opportunities for new services, or keeping a, or getting into the 20th, first century mm -hmm. with, I think we're doing a decent job, but we may be able to do it better. There's always something you can do different. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so Polly will be in the new main library. Mm -hmm. If and when. Yes. <laughs> So hold your breath. We don't know what's mm -hmm. happening. <laughs> but but yeah. because that is being discussed in the library mm -hmm. community and, the well, the community of Lincoln at <laughs> large. Well, it's it nice is, to know the, the trust the, that Lillian set up that will keep it going. You know, there's always yeah. going to be something that they it, can't. Even though it, Lillian yeah. created the space for it, mm -hmm. the music library is not tied to that space Correct. specifically. Yes. Just something somewhere mm -hmm. can, needs to exist yes. for it, yeah. In music librarianship, there are two major music library associations, at least from the American view. There is the Music Library Association, which is the American organization. It was founded in 1931. For years, early in my career, I was very active in the Music Library Association. And I'm still a member. I'll be attending at the conference later this month. But I'm no longer as active as I used to be because my focus, oh, 20 years ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
shifted to the International Association of Music Libraries, Archives, and Documentation Centers, or YAML for short. It's a member of IFWA and the International Music Council and a whole bunch of other organizations. It used to have, there used to be a YAML US, which was the American branch, mm -hmm. except a Three or four years ago, it merged with the Music Library Association. Mm -hmm. So now the Music Library Association is the American branch American of YAML. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and m almost all the members of YAML US were members of the Music Library Association. It was just a smaller group with an international focus. I was invited to my first YAML conference in Ottawa, Canada, 1994, wow. so 20 years yeah. ago, <laughs> to present a paper on the Poly Music Library in a session on North American public music libraries, trying to show the variety mm -hmm. that there was in organization, collections, and what they do. I loved it. It was so much fun and I felt so welcomed. Before I got registered, I was walking from the hotel to the university where I was going to register and the YAML president stopped me on the street, welcomed me to YAML, said how wonderful he thought you right there on the that, it, that I could come and hoped that I would have a wonderful conference. Nice. I mean, how many conferences does that have? <laughs> um, you know, maybe we need to do that for every conference and make sure everybody's welcomed. Anyway, Ottawa, my paper went very, very well. And I decided, yeah, I would had a, a good time in Ottawa and it was close enough that I could afford to go. But the next year was going to be in Elsinore, Denmark. Oh, yeah, Canada's way easier to get to from yeah. here. <laughs> and that little slide, little picture from Elsinore is Hamlet's Castle. Hmm. I decided that I'd had such a good conference in Ottawa, I would try going to Denmark. I had a wonderful conference there, too. And again, I felt very welcomed. Uh, people from the national libraries were willing to talk to me. And, you know, nobody was out of, above mm -hmm. where they would talk to other people. Yeah. It was such a welcoming, friendly, organization and I learned so much that I decided I'd go the next year. <laughs> it was it, were you presenting all the time or just I presented in Ottawa and mm -hmm. then I presented again in Perugia. Okay. I'm over on the right. Um, I did I would have to say I did a very forgettable paper there. <laughs> but I, it also was a wonderful conference, mm -hmm. and I learned so much. And not only they had been welcoming before, but in '96 I was elected secretary of the public libraries branch, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or YAML. So then I had to go to the next mm -hmm. several. So I was hooked mm -hmm. on YAML. Um, You'll see that the United States hosted Finally, in, in 2002, yeah. <laughs> and I was registrar for that conference. Then I was on, I was planning, and as a U, YAML US board member and a board member for um, the YAML Public Libraries branch, I had a lot of responsibilities for that. But I ended up getting sick and couldn't go oh. at the last minute. That's why it's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> but when I went yeah. pretty steadily from 1994 
to 2005. Skip the year. And in Sydney, we met at the Sydney Conservatorium. I presented a paper on Polly's digitization project, mm. projects. And that went fabulous. Oh, yeah. And every digitization project that somebody presents a paper on is another possible resource mm -hmm. when we go to help our customers. So you find out that, yeah, that they have something there that yeah. may, may answer someone's mm -hmm. question here, yeah. But 2007, you know, the, the economy does play a role. Mm -hmm. And YAMA was one of those organizations where I then missed a few years. And they welcomed me back as if I had never been gone. Mm -hmm. So in Dublin 2011, we were at Tr Trinity College, and I presented a paper on Tin Pan Alley Irish music from the Polly Sheet Music Collection. Mm -hmm. And so it was a re basically a research paper built around um, sheet music in that the Polly worked, Collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, it went fabulously. And I was glad, I was really glad I went. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a fantastic conference and I learned so much. Okay, it's in Montreal the next year. North easy, America yeah. again, <laughs> easier to get to. And in Montreal, I was elected chair of the Yamal Public Libraries branch. Oh, nice. So even though I'd been gone a few years and just come back, it was... You can like stay a, involved and connect you can with stay people involved. because you met them from before. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And enough other people because of the world economic crises mm -hmm. during the years I was gone had Lots also been gone. Yeah. And so Yamal is an organization where you can come and go. Mm -hmm. Uh, how big is the conference? Do you know how many people attend? The lowest number was 99 in Wellington, New Zealand. Oh, wow. Okay. But it usually is 300 to 400. Nice. Not bad. So a nice size conference. Mm -hmm. Last year was Vienna. That happens to be the Musikverein. We had our conference sessions at the University of Vienna, but we had our concert, one of our concerts was at the Music Verein, and the other one was at the Palace at Schoenbrunn, at a concert hall at Schoenbrunn mm -hmm. Palace. Again, just fabulous conference. One of the neat things about the YAML conferences is that we have library visits, visits to all sorts of libraries. Mm -hmm. In Vienna, they have the Vienna City Library in the Rathaus or City Hall is a research library, but they also have the public library, which this is the branch that has the major music collection anyway. Um, it's on top of a subway station. And on the rooftop is a cafe. <laughs> nice. And several floors of library. But just simply seeing how other people are doing the same, basically the same things that we're trying to do can give one ideas. Mm -hmm. And Diamond is also good for discussing issues that if you're having an issue, probably somebody else is having that same issue. However, in Copenhagen, I haven't heard of any other library where the whole of the audiovisual collection was stolen one night. Oh, wow. And they believe that it was probably 
taken out to sea immediately mm -hmm. and gone. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, you can't do <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to prepare for something mm -hmm. like that. No. But, I mean, that certainly got us talking about theft of collections and collection mm -hmm. security. Wow, when, yeah, that's crazy. And that's not always a topic. <laughs> A little here and there, you yeah. know, one thing, a book, uh -huh. uh, something will go missing, but not mm -hmm. an entire collection, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a typical YAML conference day doesn't officially start until 9 o'clock in the morning, but sometimes there are breakfast meetings, but there's papers, then there's a coffee break and exhibits, more papers, and there's working meetings. There's lunch and committee meetings, papers, mm -hmm. coffee break and exhibits, papers or library visits, and then concerts or receptions. So it's a full day. Mm -hmm. And at a reception, very likely, it's going to be someplace where they're going to give you a tour. Right. So if it's... Mm -hmm. Very common to many library conferences, except we get the concerts. That's yeah. some, some cool thing to be specific uh -huh. to this. <laughs> what I've done in YAML, I've, of course, attended a whole bunch of conferences. I've done some papers. I've been an officer. I've been on committees. And right now, I'm involved in an informal social media policy discussion group and I'm learning so much just from the discussions that we're having. And it's being done via a wiki. Probably the first thing you have to do to be involved is show up. But in every library organization that I'm a part of, they're looking for people to do things. Mm -hmm. Always. And if you have an interest, say so. I've had so much fun in YAML. And I've met so many people. I've used my contacts in a variety of ways. Library issues around the world really are pretty much the same. But I've certainly gotten an appreciation for our situation here that we do have funding. Not everybody, I mean, we, even when we lose funding, mm -hmm. our situation is not anywhere near as dire mm -hmm. as in many parts of the world. And yeah, that's Polly's lucky that way, yeah. Um, and a chance to see and hear about how other libraries do things. And then reference assistance for my own customers. Mm -hmm. There was a question I got about a Swiss dialect folk song. I certainly couldn't ha provide an accurate translation mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, I really didn't have any idea of how to go about finding information. I mean, I tried the internet. This was several years ago. But I, there was a colleague in Switzerland. And I was able to forward the question to the colleague in Switzerland via email. Mm -hmm. And he was able to provide all the information that the customer needed in a fairly timely fashion. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to contact Polly. Uh, the department's email address is polly at lincolnlibraries.org. There's uh, the telephone number. We get mail. And you can even like us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yep, I have already. Look at that. <laughs> I, wasn't, I couldn't remember. <laughs> Oh, why don't you go back and put the, yeah, here, yeah, leave that up for now. Okay, well, thank you. Um, 
I do ha did have some questions that came in okay. during the show, yeah, so we can definitely go to those. Um, that was very interesting. Um, here in Lincoln, we always hear about the Holly Music Library. It's something, you know, obviously we hear the library donation with Nebraska Memories, we're talking about mm -hmm. it, but don't always know what it's all about, what it's music, but the specifics of what kind of things are there. You mm -hmm. don't always know, like you're saying, looking up what does a music librarian do? What are we, <laughs> what's it all about? Um, so questions we have that have come in, um, okay. mainly about actually Polly's uh, collection, what you guys do okay. here. Um, the, some about the software that you use. You had, you had, you had the Finale software, Finale. finale. Um, how often are you able to update it? Does it, um, is it something that has regular? We actually versions? have not updated Finale since we put it on that machine. Okay. It is something that we so there's will no probably. available. Uh, I don't know how often it is. It really doesn't get updated mm -hmm. terribly often. Mm -hmm. um, every couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it's a ver the version that we have, I believe, is the version that they use at LPS. Mm, okay. so, so if the students there are coming um, to the library, they have the same thing yeah. to work with. That makes sense. And um, it's interesting. Have you used anything like uh, query by humming programs to help patrons? Apparently, it's programs that can someone can hum a tune and see if it uh, is that something that's ever been. Uh... <laughs> no, we do answer the whole time that Polly has been in existence. We have had um, name this tune ah, questions. Of course, yes. <laughs> um, I haven't used any of the online humming queries. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few programs and there's been a little bit of discussion of them about how accurate they are. Uh -huh. and, yeah. um, one of the things, one of the ways that we can help customers if we can't figure it out ourselves is to put it on one of the Music Library Association mailing lists Mm, okay. Like MLAL, yeah. mm -hmm. and we would simply go ahead and then notate what we had heard mm -hmm. with names of the names of the notes. Mm -hmm. And does anybody Somebody know? Somebody else what? recognize it. Yeah. yeah. Um, another question: um, Have you had any copyright issues? Um, what kinds of copyright issues have you come across in your reference work? I'm not sure. Any, I'm not sure what they mean. If with copying the music or recordings or anything like that? Um, I would say most of the use that people have made of the collection has been, would fall under fair use. Right. Um, occasionally, if someone wanted to make umpteen copies of something to mm -hmm. perform it in their choir. Um, we'd probably step in and say, uh, this may be under copyright, mm -hmm. um, just so you're aware of what you're doing, though we aren't trying to be the copyright police. Right, we can just warn them and say, you might not want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. There's other ways to get that same yeah. thing for your group. Um, that virtually everything that we have checks out. Mm -hmm. And so they don't necessarily have to be copying it in the library. Right, you don't know what they're doing. When we they don't know with it. No. The... Sure. And that's not anything we can do anything about anyways. Yeah, we have no idea. And we have books on music copyright and music mm -hmm. licensing. Mm -hmm. So if people are interested and want to delve into it further, mm -hmm. um, we have material available. Because we also are not lawyers. No. That's a key thing. A lot of librarians, any topic, I can give you some information, yeah. some stuff, but no, we are not lawyers and we're not going to pretend <laughs> that mm -hmm. we can give you that advice. And so simply saying it may be under copyright, mm -hmm. it appears it's <laughs> under copyright. <laughs> We can't even get necessarily give a definitive answer on that. Right. You, but you There's a copyright yeah. <laughs> notice down on that page. Right. And you can but, tell them, here's how you might want to 
figure this out for yourself mm -hmm. where you might want to go to research and see yeah. what the status is of this particular mm -hmm. item. Yeah. And we've had authors who wanted who come to us to find, see if they can track down who they would get permission from to use mm -hmm. right. a quote. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go track, try to track down publishers and tracing publishing companies right. can be a little tricky, but at least if they've got, if someone's gotten to that stage, they do know that the, they usually know that they need to get mm -hmm. formal permission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last question we have is actually something I was wondering about too, and you had mentioned it. You said that um, your sheet music, music collection is not cataloged. Certainly, no. they're not in the catalog. So, how do you um, find what people need? How do you um, get, go through it? <laughs> it is in an access database. Oh, okay. It actually was started in an R base database, oh, wow. which was a relational database way back when. Mm -hmm. And there's a variety of ways of searching right. to find things. But if mm -hmm. we probably verify the title first before we start looking. Mm -hmm. So that's an, that's and that's just an in-house thing. So if somebody wanted to search that, they'd have to either come to the library or yes. contact you. It's not mm -hmm. connected to the online. It's not online. collected. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just too much to try and get into there? Or <laughs> would be like, um, I don't. I'd is say the, the catalog really built for it. The, everything could be cataloged, mm -hmm. but it takes staff time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, staff time takes money, yeah. and it's not a priority. Mm -hmm. So we thought of going for a grant. In fact, we had tried getting a grant, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years ago, <laughs> but we didn't get the grant mm -hmm. and it would have taken a tremendous amount of time to cat if you're cataloging 12,000 titles. Yeah, that's a huge project. It's yes. a huge project. Yeah. And even if somebody is doing that as their only job, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to take, take a long time. time. Yeah. Um, how many other staff are there that are specifically for the poly? Is it just you or who do you At have? this point, it's just me. Oh, okay. Um, throughout the history of poly, we, the staff, number of staff has varied any, with, anywhere from, well, one me, or two to five people, basically, for the first 25 years. Okay, cool. Um, that's all we had that came in um, while you were talking <laughs> that I saved up. Um, if anybody does have any other questions or comments or anything um, you want to share, go ahead and type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we can grab them. We still have like 10 minutes left. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to, while well, we we'll see if anybody has anything else coming in? Well, the sure. upcoming YAML conference is oh, in yeah. Antwerp. Ah, and you're going? Yes, I'll, I will be going. I have uh, program sessions to run and cool. committee meetings. And All right. Well, you're the chair of the U.S. of the public, so public uh, of the public the libraries the branch. branch. Yeah. And the year after that is in New York. Oh, nice. Okay. So that will actually provide an opportunity for some American music librarians. Mm -hmm. A lot more of them to, to get to it. Yeah. The, I see it did seem to jump all over the world, which is yeah. nice, being international, that they mm -hmm. are really sticking to that and that we will go anywhere and have this con This conference will be anywhere we possibly mm -hmm. can, yeah. And the attendance is usually fairly heavily with the people, the librarians from that general area. Mm -hmm. It might not be just that country, but it might be surrounding countries. Right. But... Um, people attend, oftentimes their first YAML conference mm -hmm. is fairly nearby. And then if they get hooked, yeah, <laughs> they uh, are willing to go a little farther. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say that I do, it's privately funded. Mm -hmm. So I'm not using tax funds. I am not mm -hmm. using library funds for attendance. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Some people would want to. Yeah. 
Um, do you have any um, like special events or anything coming up that Polly's doing? Do you guys do like programs and things? We here? occasionally do programs, but I don't have anything lined up this spring. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was really, there's lots of things going on at the library. I know that. So it's yeah, kind of and there's the also list. a lot of musical performances that are sponsored by the, for the youth. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of them are certainly appropriate for all ages. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Tycho drummers. And <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they are uh, advertised to the, the teen or the children's, but mm -hmm. yeah, I know a lot of parents go along because they want to see it too. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Well, it doesn't look like any other urgent questions have come in while we've been talking. So um, I guess that would be, um, Nobody has anything else they needed to ask you about on here, but they have your contact information. So obviously, if they do mm -hmm. anything else you want to ask, uh, that's how you can contact um, Carol and, and or um, anything about the Poly itself or what you're doing with mm -hmm. the International Library Groups and the other libraries. Um, anything else you want to say to wrap up, or does anybody have a question? Just thank you for. Mm -hmm. coming and listening. Yeah, um, this is uh, one of our staff here at the commission that uh, suggested <laughs> that we get you guys, um, have you on um, the show to share what's going on over there. So um, I'm glad they did and I'm glad we were able to get you here, especially on this uh, snowy day that we just had. Uh, I know lots of other areas in the country are way worse than we are <laughs> today, <laughs> um, but we did have a storm last night and uh, street cleaning is still progressing, but we both made it <laughs> downtown to um, Lincoln City is in here, the commission, so we were able to do this, not a problem. So thank you very much, then. Well, thank um, you. Ending. And thank you, everyone, for um, coming in this morning. Uh, the show is being recorded, so it'll be available afterwards if you have been, if you want to watch it later. Um, I've got Carolyn's slides, too, so the slides will be available. You have all those pictures and things of the places you went. And um, any of the websites that were mentioned, the Poly Library, the so Music Associations, um, their Facebook page, um, I've been collecting all of those, so you'll have access, you'll have those as well. Um, afterwards to um, quickly be able to um, access and look up. So uh, that we will wrap it up for this morning. There we go. There's our Encompass Live page. Um, and uh, uh, the archive, when the recording is done, it will be on our page. Uh, right down here below all of our upcoming sessions, we have a link to our archive Encompass Live sessions. So you can go there, and it will bring you the recordings of all of our previous shows are here. So that's you'll, where you'll be able to watch that or watch anything that you may have missed. And I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is succession planning, a board and staff responsibility. Uh, Jamie LaRue, who's um, formerly with the um, Douglas County, Colorado Libraries, he was a director there, and just the end of last year, I believe it was, um, left there and has gone out on his own, his own consulting um, group that he's doing. So he's going to be on talking about succession planning when you need to um, have a new, bring in a new director. Um, some, something you think about before it happens, not after it's happened and figure out what you want to do. So um, definitely uh, sign up for uh, that episode and any of other future ones we have on our calendar. We have a, quite a few uh, topics coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, Hastings Public Library has Google Glass. That's what that one is about. Uh, password management and security. All these credit card things going on, definitely an important topic. Uh, our regular summer reading program session, uh, Sally Snyder is our children's and young adult uh, coordinator here. She'll be uh, doing a session on what's coming up for that. So um, definitely take a look at our, sh our uh, different episodes, sign up for them. And um, let me get over here. There we go. And Encompass Live is also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Encompass Live. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do uh, like us on there. You'll get notifications of when new shows are coming up and recordings are available. Um, reminders when today's show is starting so that you could join us as well. So like us on there. If you are a Facebook user, look for us. Look for Poly Music Library. Other than that, that will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.